Gadgets. Live! Good afternoon, it's Thursday! I'm Josh with Brown Dog Gadgets here, as always, with Pete. Hey there, I'm over here. He's the disembodied hand that pops <laughs> in every now and then to say That's hello. Right. Uh, we're here today doing another fun interview. Yay. Yay! We've got Helen in from all the way from Berlin. She's That's coming true. in to talk about her really cool books and the really cool maker stuff that she does. And hopefully uh, our internet connection holds out and we can live stream <laughs> all smoothly and effectively. If not, please bear with us because we're trying. That's but right. uh, we're not all that interesting. Uh, oh, by the way, browndoggadgets.com. Browndoggadgets.com. Uh, there we go. There we yeah. go. You can find all of our projects, resources, and whatnot. Thanks for that the sound effect, Pete. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and you can find some of the resources and materials that Helen is using on our website. Although her book is pretty cool and you should totally buy it. But enough about book. us. There's, there's her book. There you go. <laughs> but we're going to bring Helen on because I can totally hear her up here. So we might as well uh, bring her on. Let's do this. Here we go. Here we oh, go. Pete, get rid of Brown Dog Gadgets Let's there. get rid of Brown Dog. they got too many, too many overlays. There Hi, Helen. Overlays. Thanks for coming okay. on today. There we go. Come this way. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice and centered. Yeah, Perfect. Like uh, how, are things in, how are things in Berlin, Helen? Things are great in Berlin. It's nighttime here, um, but it's been a lovely sunny day, and uh, we're almost out of quarantine here, which is very exciting. So shops are open and so on. Oh, everything's uh, yeah. <laughs> lucky you. Now, uh, yes. Helen, as people may or may not know, you may be in Berlin, but you're not German. Uh, where are you from, Helen? I am not. I am Welsh originally, um, but I moved to um, I moved to Berlin from London. Um, so I've, I've I've been around a lot. I've lived in France and New Zealand and China as well. So oh. been been around all over the place. But yeah, originally Welsh. Now you do a lot in Berlin. Well, you do a lot of really cool maker projects. That's how we originally met you and got to know you was through the really cool maker projects that you do. And you even have this really cool book, which I I know you have in front of you right there. Uh, I do. So tell yeah. us about your book and why you made this really cool crafty kids book. Um, so I have been teaching electronics at different levels for um, quite a while now. Um, I teach um, from maybe the ages of seven all the way up to a postgraduate level um, at um, PhD and master's level. Um, and I like to teach creative electronics um, in a way that's a little bit different to the traditional way that electronics is taught. I like to teach it um, through the medium of craft or through the medium of different arts. I mean, if you know me from Twitter, you'll know that one of the things I really like to do is make a lot of weird musical instruments. Um, but the other thing I really like to do is smush together um, crafting and um, computing um, or electronics, pure electronics. So um, I was teaching... Um, electronics through um, sewing, through paper crafting, through DIY robotics. And I was looking around and I couldn't really see um, a book that was um, adorable enough <laughs> for me to really buy into. So I, um, I approached um, I approached a publisher, I approached McGraw-Hill who are my publishers and were like, hey there, can I write a book about cute electronics please? And they said, yes, please. Um, and, and that's what this book is. That's the, my most recently published one. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's teaching the basic concepts of electronics um, and it teaches it through paper craft, through origami, through tape, um, through simple robotics and a lot of soft circuits and wearables as well. So I, um, I enjoy sewing and I enjoy um, and doing wearable type things as well. So um, I thought it'd be fun to do an unusual electronics book that focuses on projects. So each chapter um, teaches one craft skill and one electronic skill because I think children should know how to tie a knot as well as <laughs> make a circuit. <laughs> very <laughs> handy. Teach good skills. Yeah. yeah, very handy, very handy. This, this book was pretty interesting to write, actually, because um, I actually wrote it with an advisory board of 200 girls. Um, wow. So actually, I didn't choose. I can't take credit for any of the projects in this book. I actually came up with maybe 200 ideas, which I sent out to this group of girls. Um, and they chose, they voted on every single project that went on the book. So um, so there are some book, some projects in there I was like, really? <laughs> like, this is, and the project I was going to do this afternoon, if my internet um, connection 
holds up is actually one of the ones that I was surprised that the, the kids chose, but you know, I'm not I'm not a nine year old girl, so um, I, I'm listening to the nine year old girls when I uh, choose what goes in. So yeah, that's that's the book. Oh, there's a, one other interesting thing about the book as well um, is that um, in each of so there's four chapters. There's paper circuits, soft circuits, wearables, and um, de- and simple robotics. And each of the chapters has an inspirational female role model who works in that field. Um, an artist um, who works with someone who does origami art, um, someone who designs costumes for the Marvel Universe, um, a, a hardware games engineer, and who's the last one? I forget. Um, anyway, there's these good good role models for each of the um, books as well, uh, so for each of their concepts as well. So I think that was nice. It's important for girls to have good role models to look up to i think for yeah. sure so, yeah hey, book. your book has like quite a <laughs> I think that's really cool about your book just yeah that wide range of activities you have and just how mm. how interesting they are i know uh even with like when we deal with kids like what they like and what we as adults think they like are, are sometimes very different so it's really awesome that I you know. had a group of kids pick the projects because that more they're probably more yeah. yeah on the level with what it, other kids. It's true. Want. It's true. So I, I was there was some <coughs> project that I really wanted the kids to vote for, and they were like, "That sounds really t- terrible." Like <laughs> it was like the lowest. I wanted wanted to make like this uh, wibbly wobbly, you know, like the the garage sale, um, like man, you know, the wibbly oh, yeah, wobbly. Yeah. <laughs> and it got like one vote. Oh, I was no. like, really. What? <laughs> Very upsetting. Um, so that one wasn't in the book. Maybe I'll do a book with all the rejected ideas another time. But yeah, so yeah, I think it's true, isn't it? You've got to ask kids what they like. Um, I think it's it's great to have these. In fact, every everything. When I did the, um, so I did a pro- I did a, a product for um, P. Maroney and Imogen Heap, who's um, an, a musician. I did a DIY wearable. Um, gesture sensing glove that teaches kids to code um, and that um, again was done completely with an advisory board of young girls because I think it's really important to ask children what it is that they value about a learning experience and what it is that they liked what they didn't like what they understood you know um, I think it's kind of common sense really um but yeah it's, it's, it also makes it more fun for you as a as a, someone who makes products and um and writes books so yeah it's win-win <laughs> oh, indeed well so i always we always get this question from um from parents especially or from teachers who've never done these kinds of stem and steam activities the big question is like what kind of materials do you need because stuff i can find at home do you have to go buy things mm-hmm. from different spots like what's kind of the kind of the standard parts that you would need to make some of the projects in your kit or the most wide range of things in your sorry in your uh, in your book so um some of the, I've tried to keep so basically when I was writing this book I tried to keep the price like I, I tried to make it so it was less than five dollars per project no I didn't always achieve that particularly with some of the ones that have sensors but um I think it's um yeah it's, it's important to keep an eye on that price um but um actually quite a lot of the um the components that we use are widely available now now there's good online shopping so in the US, you've got yourself, you've got Adafruit, or actually like um, any kind of online retailer will sell these things. Um, and in the UK, you've got P. Maroney, who are a lovely community company as well. Um, but they're, they're reasonably widely available, not too expensive. But as long as you've got a, um, a coin cell battery and some tape, I mean, um, I use in the book, I used copper tape, but I've since been using your maker tape because it's uh, made of fabric. So it doesn't, it doesn't break quite so easily. Well, that's why we and love it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just is. Yeah. It's less frustrating, particularly when you've got a little, like a very, like one of the younger ones. Um, you know, if you get down to middle school or below that, um, um, they find the copper tape can be quite frustrating sometimes. So I do tend to use the fabric-based stuff now. But yeah, as long as you've got some some conductive tape, you've got some LEDs, you've got a battery, um, you're kind of good to go with quite a few of the projects. Um, and I think you can do a lot. You can do a lot with those 
simple components well, it, and plus the craft stuff that you have at home as a parent anyway exactly you know everybody has a drawer full of uh <laughs> construction paper markers crayons scissors all that fun stuff so i mean you've got exactly. most of the stuff there already just you know add some tape and some leds and you're good to go and uh, that's what that's what's like especially with paper crafts too they're so widely expandable they can take you know idea that you put out or we put out and just do their own thing with it as well and and when kids can do their own thing it's always very uh, much more interesting for them, much more engaging. And yeah, eh. kids, they'll, they'll do their own thing. <laughs> they will, they will. Yeah. You just gotta, you just gotta provide a little structure and a little push in the right direction and they'll go off and do their own thing. Uh, how many projects <laughs> total are in your book? Ooh, now that's a very difficult question to ask <laughs> an author when they've sent the book files off over now, like a year and a half ago. <laughs> Uh, 21, I think. Oh, yes, okay. she does. Just checking, checking the front cover. Dang. It says 20, but there's actually there's actually 21 because I put two projects in one. Ooh, hidden um, bonus project. Yeah, a hidden bonus project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 21 projects. <laughs> <laughs> feels like so, it feels like a lifetime ago this came out, but actually wasn't that long. It was just over a year. <laughs> It's it's felt like a long time uh, with things going it's, on recently. Really like it has. Just, it time really just has. keeps dragging. <laughs> it just keeps expanding. Oh, uh, never ends. Twenty twenty will never end um, at this rate. <laughs> no, uh, no. Forever stuck. Well, the upside yeah. is uh, if we have a lot of extra time, we can make more projects with all this extra twenty twenty time. Ah, That's true. The bright side to that cloud. Anyway, uh, so Helen, you're going to totally make a project for us live today. Um, so everyone can, uh, yes, can check it out. So. so what project are you going to be making today? So I'm going to make um, a pretty quick and cheap project from the paper circuits part of the book. And it's a um, one of the most popular ones with the kids and one of the ones that perplexed me the most. I thought it was filler, but they loved it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a cardboard doorbell. Um, it's basically... <laughs> But you know what? I think kids really love the idea of having privacy, right? Yeah. So anything, every project that I put out there that had some kind of like secret aspect to it, like I've got a secret spy bird and like a, a, a secret signal mood badge that you wear, like they're like very, very popular. And I think kids just like having something that's their own. Sure. And the doorbell, you know, I mean thinking back on it, it actually does kind of make sense because when I was a kid I was obsessed with like don't come into my room or telling my sister like get over to your own side of the room um you know so it's kind of that kind of children getting the, their own little uh, own little slice of um, their own personal space so I guess it fits with that but yeah it's a cardboard doorbell and it's essentially a little a little push button that you put on the outside of your room and then you press the button on the outside and it rings a little buzzer on the inside of your room. Aww. Um, yeah, it's real cute. And it's, it's a nice crafty one as well. So it's a relatively simple circuit. Um, um, but there's lots of um, expansions that you can do. You can put like sequins all over it, cover it in old wrapping paper, like just roll it in glitter like I would do. Um, or it just, you know, it's, it's something that you can do with... I think the ingredients for this make are some tape, a piezo buzzer, um, a battery. I'm actually using a battery holder today um, oh. as well, and some and some spare cardboard, and a button. Yeah, so a button, a buzzer, tape, and a battery holder. That's it's not a very long list of components that you have to get. I think it comes in at around five dollars or so. So it's. It's not going to break the bank, and it's something that um, kids really do treasure. Oh. So it's been one of the one of the more popular ones. Cool. You can make it smart by popping in a microcontroller as well, and I'll, um, I'll I'll show you that at the end if my internet connection still exists. Now, I always like um, to ask Helen <laughs> when people say buttons and paper crafts, could somebody totally make their own paper button instead of a of a hard point button? Oh. Absolutely, you could. Yeah, making your making buttons are really just opening and closing circuits, really buttons and switches. Um, it's, it's very easy to make your own uh, make your own buttons. But today, for the sake of ease, I'm going to be using <laughs> a an actual push button. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's one of yours, actually, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. It looks very nice yeah. and red. Yes, it is nice and red. It is nice and red. So yeah, a momentary push button. Mm. Um, so very cool. cool. And one of these little, little, little piezo 
those are those are some, that's another one of our parts but i know you can just get like standard um two pin ones yeah, yeah. They're, they're everywhere yeah. and they're the same i mean if somebody yeah, wanted yeah, to you yeah. could probably use one of and, those and, uh like and the cool buzzers. thing about this project is that um that it doesn't really matter which way around you put the pieces um so it's not like an led where you can put it the wrong way around <laughs> exactly um everything's golden you're you're all you're all you're all good you're all good um so yeah, shall I shall I shall I attempt to, to make something? Go for it. I mean, if if anyone's got any questions as well, I don't know what. Um, oh. you, you're very welcome to um, chat along oh. to me. This is this is very. It's, it's not it's not a. Um, a... Oh, we got a, we got a comment too. Sandy Roberts apparently is a big fan of your your book. Yeah. Is there other people on that? She, she had another comment. Oh. Oh, good. So, yeah, we'll throw comments up as uh, as they come in. So if people are watching, please comment because we shared this with like as many Facebook groups as we could who haven't kicked us out yet. So uh, the struggle is real. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, let's uh, let's let's see you make something, Helen. Let's see the, the cool project. All right. Let me see if I can uh, change the um, camera without cutting it. Let's have a go at this. I think I can. All right. Look at me. Pro level. Ready? Yay! Uh, yes. All right. It's very exciting. Maybe. Well, first of all, I want to show you my cool new tool that I got. Let me just bring up the screen again. This is a this is an art scalpel that looks like a pen, and you can. Uh... <laughs> Isn't that cool? You wouldn't want to take that on an airplane, though. They might tell you off. No, no, they they probably would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, handcuff you out out of the plane. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm just going to start off by drawing a doorbell. I'm going to do a two layer doorbell, I think. Just um, I'm not the world's best drawer, but I'm going to I'm going to draw it out anyway. I'm going to just sketch out a, a rough, a rough. Um, hang on, let me just put on the button because we don't know. Maybe that's about right, isn't it? Here we go. I was trying to imagine my head. I was trying to imagine my head. Like, what does a doorbell look like? Because um, it's been so long since I had to ring a doorbell. I just. Like, I know. What, what's what's a quintessential <laughs> bell look like in in 2020? Um, well, this is what it looks like today. I'm just doing a. <laughs> there we are, and then I'm taking my uh, my scalpel. You can do this with scissors, of course. It's just I find it easier to use a scalpel. Do, do, do. You can do this with um, cereal packets. You can do this with colored card, anything really. I'm just using some um, corrugated cardboard just because I've got it lying around. Thanks to Amazon, we all have corrugated cardboard in our homes know, these right? days. Yeah. It's just piles of it. Yeah. Move that in this way. I haven't quite got uh, understood the direction of my uh, camera yet. Let's see if that went through. I certainly went through something. I'm just going to do it from the other side. Free it. I do like cardboard. This is just single walled corrugated cardboard. You can do lots with that. Did you see? I'm sure everybody saw it, but the um, the little kid who made the um, cardboard um, arcade game. Yeah, was it Kane? Was that what his was his name? name? Was it Kane or Kate or something? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Arcade, arcade, arcade or something. Oh, yeah. 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 There's our little doorbell. It's a bit skewy, but it'll do. <laughs> so the maker's clarion call, isn't it? Oh, that'll do. <laughs> uh, I actually do prefer projects that don't that aren't perfect because I see way too many very perfect projects on YouTube and and like Instructables. Like you put way too much work into that very cute and simple project. I. If it's a little bit of skewer, it makes me feel like better. Like, oh, look, I can totally do that. I'm about as good at cutting things as that person is. Um, well, <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows I'm a big fan of um, slightly rubbish um, technology. It's much more fun and much more personable. Um, one of one of my the first projects that um, really got um, a lot of attention was a very bad but very funny um robot unicorn that was made out of cardboard and i was i, I did it because i i, I was doing this um 
job for um, a a, um, a robot manufacturer who will remain unnamed. Um, <laughs> but I was very bored by their boring robot um, that just always just followed the line exactly correctly. And ah. they have like a, bo- a boy's version, which is blue, and a girl's version, which is pink. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Um so basically, after I finished that project, I was like, oh, I, want, I really want to make a stupid robot um, that has personality and doesn't ever go in the right direction. Um, so I made, instead of using like proper motors and an H bridge, I just used two continuous rotation servers, servos um, that were ascent, just like shoved onto a microbe, like soldered onto a microbe. It was an absolute mess. The kids went wild for it because it was glittery and pink. And, and because, as you'll know, if you've ever used continuous rotation servos, they, they never actually, they never calibrate. No two servos are the same. It's like a snowflake, right? Yep, they're you know, They're all calibrated yeah. differently. So if you put two on two sides of a robot, you're very quickly going to have a robot that likes to go in different directions to the way that you point it. Um, however... When you uh, when you give a kid that robot, the fact that it never goes in the right direction um, is actually an enduring quality, particularly if you're racing them, um, which I did. Um, I went I went all over I went all over different museums um, in London. This was back when I was living in London, um, racing them. Um, well, actually, the first item that my herd of robot rubbish robot unicorns got was at a um, a, this, there's a wonderful science museum in London called the Science Museum, um, <laughs> astonishingly. Um, and they invited me along for their, it's like an adults only um, viewing of the Science Museum, which is normally full of children, right? Um, and they let you drink and play on all the children's science exhibits. Um, it's great fun. Good it's combo. Like, um, I know, right? So I had this, like, all these, like, science museum, um, people who'd come to the science museum when I was doing these um, racing games with these rubbish robot unicorns. So that was a very long-winded um, way to say that um, I think that rubbish technology can be very endearing and um, almost more inspiring sometimes, particularly if you're teaching with it, right? If you present a child with something that is perfect and a fait accompli, um, you're never gonna, you know, they're like, well, what can I possibly do to improve this? Um, whereas if you make something slightly rubbish with a, a slightly skew, a skew-if head, they're gonna be like, oh, I could do that. Oh, totally, now you wanna you make know? it accessible for them and make it, <laughs> make it a project that they can see themselves like actually doing because exactly. I know yeah in the same way when I as an adult doing projects like that's just way too perfect that's way too <laughs> difficult but no kids like it when you can see something oh like it's not a machine made it's not done on a CNC router or, or 3D printer no exactly and we're just cutting out when a cardboard when I was first designing this I was I was I was um, laser cutting it oh um, but but um, actually um, obviously not every child has access to a laser cutter in their home all right so here is my 2D cardboard doorbell Ooh. that exists now. Um, I managed to, yeah, I've managed to leave my glue in the other room, but never mind, we can uh, we can improvise around that. And then, so that's what the, that's what the stacked up doorbell will look like. So that's a very long-winded explanation of um, why I can't apparently cut a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like it's it's like some kind of you know logical jumping through hoops like <laughs> no 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 the the reason my uh, my 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 craft skills are terrible despite having a written a literal book on craft is because it's better for children. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, I think we, we have another comment too. Uh, Pete, yeah, we who's were commenting? Talking about uh, I don't know if you guys know Maker Block. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, oh, you mentioned Kane. Kane's arcade. Yeah, they, it was in Make Magazine. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah, it was this kid who like nice. built. I think his dad had a like an auto shop, and he built uh, an, all, all these arcade machines out of cardboard, and then people from the neighborhood came and played them, and like yeah, it was that's a great right. Time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, cool. That's it. Um, so yeah, that's the outside of my cardboard. I mean, this is um, this is um, this is a the cardboard 
base plate. So essentially what I've done, I mean, you can do whatever you like, obviously. You, you know, doorbells aren't just one shape and size. But what I've done is I've just done the same the same kind of pattern on um, on two levels. So I can stack them up. And then this one goes on this. So this is just going to, this will go on the outside of the door. So eventually once this is all glued up and um, the, the circuit is made, what we'll do is you'll press the button. And as you press the button, you'll be connecting... Um, you'll be yeah, connecting the um, completing the circuit. <laughs> you'll be completing the circuit so that um, your buzzer will sound. So that's the the main part of it done. For well, not the the main the main uh, body of the doorbell is is finished. Um, I should uh, maybe take a minute to um, to um, to t talk a little bit about buttons and switches for those of you who've um, come here and you don't um, know about them so you'll notice so when you are starting off with electronics the classic thing that you'll do is have a look at a battery so on one side of this coin cell you've got the plus and then you've got a nice bumpy side on the other and then if you get an led you'll notice that it's got two different size legs now these are clues as to which way around the electricity has to run through a component to make it do something so the long leg of an LED is positive and the long, short leg is negative. And you need to match that up to the two sides of the battery in order to make it light up. OK, there we go. Electronics 101. You've just made a, <laughs> a tiny, a tiny torch. Very exciting. Um, but with a, um, with a with a with a button like this, um, you'll notice that there is no positive and negative. Okay, so if you if you look at this kind of if at this button, if you look at any kind of um, button, you won't have a positive and negative um, on there, and that's because this button, which is unlike an LED, it can be used either way around. So you can turn it around; it doesn't really matter. All that it's doing is that is 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 opening and closing the circuit so allowing the electricity to flow around or stopping the electricity from flowing around because remember that um electricity can only flow around a circuit um when the circuit is complete so that all, that's all this button does right it's just um um once that it allows the electricity to flow from one side and the other so that's what we're doing Okay, so it's type of switch, essentially. Um, and there's two types of switches that you can use in your inventions um, that, brought, that fall into two broad categories. You've got momentary switches and maintained switches. Now, momentary switches, like this one, they're only active when they're being pressed. For example, a doorbell, which is what this is gonna be, or keys on a keyboard. So yeah, as I say, this button is momentary, but a maintained switch stays in one state until you switch it to another. For example, um, a light switch that flips between on and off, okay? So just wanted to give you a little bit of information about what this component actually is. So yeah, momentary switch, like a doorbell. All right, cool. So now the cardboard doorbell is ready. Now at this point in my, my make, I would normally just take a bit of time to decide where I want my doorbell to go okay so you need to, there's two halves of this circuit there's the doorbell side and then there's the buzzer side so if you want you think about um, where you're going to be and where your visitor is going to be so you might want to put your doorbell on the outside of your door and the buzzer on the inside of the door um, or you might want to put a buzzer in your playroom um, so you might want to put the button in the playroom and the buzzer in your kitchen to buzz up to your mum when she needs a snack when you need a snack um, but she might not she might not like that <laughs> <laughs> but it could be funny <laughs> so you could make a snack buzzer um, but I will say there's there's one thing that you need to consider when you're designing um, the um, where you put the two the two parts of your um, of your doorbell is that lengthening your path in a circuit means that the electricity that you're pushing around your circuit has got further to travel, right? Which doesn't matter so much if it's not very far, but if it's really 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 far, say for example from your bedroom down to the kitchen, your battery might not have enough oomph to get all the electricity all the way down to the button and then all the way back to the buzzer. So um, 
if you, uh, you you try and keep the the distance um, as close as possible to to make it to make it work. You can actually see this working if you um, if you get two really really long pieces of um, conductive tape um, and, a, and put a battery pack on one end and then move an, the legs of an LED all the way down, um, right the way down to the other side of the room. You'll see that the light will eventually turn off because the electricity can't make it all the way. That's kind of a fun experiment to do. <laughs> well, we did actually. We All did. Right. We did testing on that on that maker tape. I think it was the uh, about one to five ohms per per foot. Yeah. I think was the resistance on them. I mean that. It, so we get a pretty decent amount of. Uh, but I'm not, you know, for kids projects, you know, a few feet, there's no no big issue yeah, with yeah. it, which is which is nice. Uh, doing you know, like conductive Maybe thread from can the, get the basement. <laughs> yeah. I, well. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think I think a few feet is plenty is, is absolutely fine. It's enough. It's just enough from one room to another as long as they're um, close rooms. Yeah. All right. So the next part we've done the doorbell bit. Hooray! Let's pop that off to the side for a second. Um, and the next bit, um, I'm actually going to do on this handy little Lego board because I've um, you can do it on cardboard as well. Um, but because I've got this Lego board, I'm going to use it because who doesn't love using Lego boards? Um, so this is going to be my base plate for the inside of my room. So this is the outside. This is for the outside. I mean, you could make this, you could make the, the button out of um, Lego as well if you wanted. That'd be kind of a fun one. I just made this out of cardboard. But this one was fun to make out of. Um, I'm going to put it on this Lego thing. So what we've got here is we just, I'm just going to figure out where I'm going to place it before I put my... Um, before I'm gonna put my strain, um, things down. So I'm going to, the two bits that need to go onto this are the piezo, that's the buzzer, the thing that makes the noise, and the battery pack. And what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna have a, take a look at this. So we've got, um, you've got the positive side of, if you turn, flip over this, I mean, every, as you know, every, every, um, every battery's got a positive and negative side. Um, and this is a, just a battery holder. So on the other side of the battery holder, we've got a positive side and then we've got a negative side. So the positive side is, uh, the negative side is on with the, the white hot, uh, the white circles. So we're gonna pop that down there. Um, so that's the positive side. And then we're gonna look at our piezo buzzer, which has got, again, it's got a, a couple of white holes and then a couple of black holes, which have got a little positive sign on them, a little tiny positive sign. So I'm gonna line those up, okay? So if I wanted, I could just um, connect the two positive, the positive side of the battery and the negative side uh, to the positive side of the piezo, and the negative side of the ba uh, battery to the negative side of the piezo. But we don't really want to spend our lives listening to a piezo buzzer Aww. constantly. I mean, let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> I mean, so what I'm going to do is um, just pop some tape between the two. We can always. Uh, Always amend this. Oh, it's always the worst, isn't it? Getting the backing off the tape. That, that is like the one downside of the maker tape is in the backing, <laughs> but we, yeah, it's. Uh... Is that is that is that dog? Is that dog a brown dog? Yes. I could hear a dog in the back. I, I was is I was hoping dog, nobody is could that hear. Dog brown? He is. No, He's brown and dog. white. He is locked out of the, uh, the the video room here because he likes to be underfoot. <laughs> and unfortunately, I, I can see his little shadow outside the door, just being very sad. And, and I, I'm like, can people hear? Um, apparently, yes. The answer is yes. yes they can yes. hear. Uh, Poor doggo. He, I know. He just. The problem is, he just wants to hang out with you so bad. Like, uh, he, he just. I know. He loves hanging out with people, but he, he wants to be like under the desk, it, just hanging out <laughs> under the desk. And it's like, oh, little it's guy. Not the best place for doggos. Not, not right now, bud. Not. I know. Pete, would you let the dog in? I can let the. Dog let the dog in. <laughs> just let. Oh, he's suffered enough, I suppose. <laughs> I was like, can people hear that dog? Like, is there air conditioner on the fritz? No, it's it's a very sad dog. It's okay, Chips. You can come in here, bud. It's okay. Hi, I know. Chips. It's That's okay. Cute. Come here, bud. Come here. It's you can be. I like electronics named dogs. There's a cute corgi um, that one of my friends owns called Servo, which I think is cute. But, There's another corgi. There's lots of corgis, and hackers have a lot of corgis. See, I told you corgis, um, Pete. All about I know. The corgis. I know corgis. 
I'm not, I'm not, I see, I didn't used to love corgis, but then I met my friends, um, one's called Photon and one's called Servo, and it's just like the cutest little things. But the thing is, corgis know they're cute. That's the thing. Wow. Well, I, they, they absolutely know it. So, uh, actually, I didn't name the dog Chips. He, uh, he was a, a rescue and he came with that name. Oh. That was his name from the previous owner. Um, wow, just, it was meant to be. Yes, he, he is a very good, he's an English Springer Spaniel, so I mean, uh, he, he is a very loving and caring dog. He just sometimes cares too much. Um, that explains his accent. I didn't know he was English. <laughs> he, he howls with a very, yeah. very posh accent. It's yeah. true. Oh, does he? That's yes. hilarious. Um, All right. So I've made a very basic circuit here. Um, I'm going to pop that in. Pop the battery in. And if the battery is not dead. No. Where's that? I think I put it in the wrong way around. It's possible. Actually, it shouldn't matter for the piezo speaker. Piezo speakers, I don't think, have a positive and negative on them. Um, no, they have them on the thing. But, um, oh, so hmm. we actually put those on there because people get really weirded out if you don't have a positive and negative on parts. Like, we used to not have them on our, on our... No, you're right. It should be the... Uh, you had it the right way, Helen. Um, I know. Maybe it's just a dead battery. Know, uh, it's probably a dead battery. Uh, These are very old batteries that I found in a, in a drawer, so... Uh. Uh, yeah, I, but yeah, we used to not have positive and negatives on our switches, but people got really like, what do you mean? Like there has to be a positive and negative. I've had people mm -hmm. argue with me that there is a, such a thing as a positive and negative uh, wire. <laughs> like you didn't, you didn't so many <laughs> negative wires. I'm like, they're just wires. I've had people argue that with me as well. Color. Hmm. I don't know why that's not. Um... Well, it, it, it would be loud. <laughs> it should be working. <laughs> that should be working. There's no simpler circuit than that. Um, actually, try, Maybe it's my batteries. I'll try another battery. It could just be batteries. Or another thing, too, you could always just um, run a piece of maker tape over the top of the battery, too. You don't even need a battery holder. Yeah. So this is conductive on top and bottom. Which I know. Is, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a slight chance that you have one of the very few. Yes, browndoggadgets.com. Thank, thank you, Pete. <laughs> there's a slight chance you might have actually have a bad battery holder. We did have a small batch of bad ones. I don't know if I sent... Uh -huh. You were good one that it's been so long, but usually people would have noticed by now. It's been like a year and a half. Um, uh, but Almost uh, as long as the book's been out, uh, we're not in her book. See, we 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 were we weren't cool enough to be in her book because we didn't know her Next yet. Next book. Next. Book. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, I think it's the. Uh, well, it might be the. It, it might be the piezo then. I don't know because it's been a while since I've tried putting, or it could just be like just old batteries too. Because it's been those CR two or three twos are just kind of. I did the I did the time and the the tried and tested. Does it taste of something? The battery that is. That's. Uh, it doesn't taste it. It doesn't taste it very much. Batteries. I'm just going to get another battery. Eat those. <laughs> don't eat the batteries. Well, like, was it the old thing, P2, like AA batteries, if they bounce, they're good. If they don't bounce, Supposedly, they're bad. yeah, or you drop them in water. If they float, it's a witch, right? Uh, so, I mean, that's what you do with uh, – actually, that's what you do with peony seeds I, oh. I learned the other day. For, oh, for, wow. If you have peony seeds, you're supposed to put them in a bucket of water. The ones that floats, float okay. are, are duds. The ones that huh. sink are good. Yeah. Um, you know how I test those little coin cells? I just put an LED on it usually. Oh, see, oh, see, this is the perfect thing for using. Uh, Helen, we made, uh, used a, uh, what was it, uh, oh, a clothespin, clothes yeah. and we made an LED or a battery tester with a clothespin uh, oh, and some great. maker tape and uh, an LED, so you just clip it on to see if it was good or not. Um, Helen, did, do, you, do you have clothespins in the in the UK? What do you call them there? Actually... I, mean, it's, I can actually see it from here. I'll be right back. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm coming back. You're, you're coming back. We're all, we're all okay. going for walks. We're all, all going right. for just walks. Just a brick today. wall now. Oh, no. Oh. I'm back. There it is. Not just a brick wall. <laughs> I've got a new battery and a new battery holder. See, that? see we have this, this clothespin with an LED on top. and uh, battery? Uh, we put a battery in there, and it lights up. and. Yeah. Life is good. Oh, now you got like a really old one from us. That's purple. That's a prototype. I know. This one's very old. That's, yeah, Let's that's it... like a version one prototype of ours <laughs> from oshpark.com. Or... Um, oh, really? Oh, oh purple prototypes. Fun. Yeah. Do you, do you know someone from Oshpark? I might know somebody from Oshpark. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, we do know someone. Uh, this this very strange <laughs> painted nailed man named Drew. Hook, hook, yeah, we do. He's from Chicago, I think. You know what? It's the piezo doesn't seem to be working. Oh. See, I don't think I've ever used our, P, uh, our our speakers without a microcontroller in the mix. 
Yeah, um, it might be that. Maybe I should get a... Uh, I've only ever used your piezos with a microcontroller. Yeah, me too. I, I was actually surprised because, yeah, I've never used them well, without a microcontroller, so... Yeah, um, well, luckily for you, I do have an entire box of analog um, sound electronics in the other room. Let me, uh, let me just go and grab them. <laughs> so... So, people, if you're watching and you have questions, please uh, send them our way. This is us troubleshooting a project. Questions, comments, uh, questions, comments concerns, hopes, dreams, uh, pictures of your dog, <laughs> which yeah. you can't share, but I'm sure you could. Um, it's like a piezo. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we have a drawer full of those like in our warehouse, too. And, and those are the ones I've used with, um, with just batteries in the past. Yeah. Um, or like the, me I, was it, the mechanical buzzers. Those are always fun because they make a nice buzz sound kind of like mm -hmm. the like the joy buzzers um those are also weirdly expensive for some weird reason too i don't know i can never find them at a decent price for personal Which use ones? or business use the mechanical ones um it's kind of like knife switches i love a good knife switch for showing like how a circuit works yeah but they're always cool. so expensive yeah. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hang on let me put this put this real thing in this is like real time making. So actually, this is actually kind of a nice thing to chat to, to talk to talk through. So when I'm troubleshooting, you have to change one thing at a time, just like science. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just holding because I know these can I know the connections fine. I've used this tape enough that it never rips. So um, I'm just holding these down and then testing these one piece by piece. Ta da All right. Yeah, you probably have a have one of the defective ones because we sent out a batch of like defective. Yay, Pete! Thanks for that. All right. Sound effect. Yeah, you probably. Uh, <laughs> All right. It, it was an issue with our, our design. With our, uh, our our manufacturer had a different design spec than Osh Park did. Um, hmm. It worked fine with the Osh Park prototypes, but not with our design because they they uh, skimped out on some copper. They went like wow. less copper, so. Um, it wasn't making contact. I know we had to manually fix a bunch of those when we discovered it, but we did send out a, f a few of them, especially like people for testing. Um, yeah. We came back like this isn't working. I'm like, oh, but it was because there was enough copper on on the bottom, uh, high enough copper layer height, so it wasn't making contact with the bottom of the battery. So just we actually put a little bit of solder on them and it fixed it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, and so I saw like, yep, that that might be because that's a pretty pretty old piece I sent you, which was fixed like five thousand you know battery what? holders it's, ago. It's, but it's a nice insight into my typical Thursday night is like running backwards <laughs> and forwards to to different rooms because something's not working and I need another component from another room. I, I'm actually I'm very surprised <laughs> you don't have like a nice beverage in hand as well to help with the making process because I find like making I past do, nine o'clock usually do. requires. But it's only soda water. Uh, we have another comment. Oh, what kind of comment do we have? Let's from see Maker here. From Block, he's asking about the PAs that you ever see those that are just the disk. They're just them. resonators. So basically, what yeah. the this provides um, is um, oh, right is a um, is a place for it to resonate around, like the body of a guitar or. Uh, um, oh. yeah. So there's no. I think that's, that's if you if you opened up one of these plastic cased things they'd look just like the um the the flat bodied ones that you see and also they, they're good in a classroom as well because um they um they get broken a bit less easy because those piezo discs can be a little bit fragile yeah i guess so there's so many different versions of the of it as well out there like it's like parts like that a uh, little piezo buzzer there's like yeah. hundreds of versions of those out there um and uh yeah just uh they all work pretty well or different in yeah, their own they, ways they all look like that. Look up there. So where does that go? I'm still not sure which direction to push it in the camera. All right. So we have we have a working battery. We have a working piezo. We have a button. Everything's all right. We've got some Lego. All is right with the world. All right. So let's uh, get the backing off of this maker tape again. We are. I feel like it's, it's deja vu, but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we've, we've had this happen to us a few times before, too. Like, oh, what's not working in this project? BrownDogGadgets.com. Uh, thanks, Pete. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And professional maker Helen Lee. <laughs> See, uh, Definitely fun. 21 fun project. Uh, yeah, really, it's 21. See, that's, that's, uh, that's false advertising. Uh, 21 projects. I know, I know, I know. Or maybe it's like a secret <laughs> hidden bonus project. Right. It's like... It is, well, because it's two in one. There was... Because there's... It's actually one of my favorite projects in the book is... Um, 
it's the most adorable one anyway so it's um how to turn a pair of the the pre there's um it's a, both of them are glove projects and it's how to turn a um a um word talent uh, <laughs> it's how to turn um, a normal set pair of woolen gloves into conductive gloves so you can oh, use sure. your touch oh, yeah. you can use your touch screen um mobile phone um while you've got your gloves on but the that's the first make but that's only you know that's only like two pages worth of make so i added in a second one which is two pairs of woolen gloves um that belong to two best friends and when the two best friends hold hands they light up a little heart on them yeah so it's really cute that's my it's a very cute little um very cute little make there we go all right so here we have, um, I'm actually going to, you may call me foolish, but I'm going to try the uh, the battery holder again, just to see if it was the battery holder. Because we, we established that it was the piazza. Actually, if, yeah. it, if, it, if it doesn't work there, what you can do is you can put a little piece of tape on the underside of the battery, um, yeah. just a little piece, and that'll bridge that gap. It was like my yeah. quick testing fix when we figured out there was an issue. We actually figured out it was an issue the first time we used them at a workshop <laughs> where I had 30 teachers all trying to get stuff to light up and none of them worked. So Ooh. that that was uh, that was my like, oh, <laughs> nothing's that, that working. Was, that, that was really fun. It was. And then yay, yay for for manufacturing errors. Um <laughs> Yeah, good good things you learn uh, when you're manufacturing things versus things you learn teaching so in a my classroom. Worst, my worst ever manufacturing error was back when back in the old days. I used to work in um, in publishing. Um, I used to make book, make books myself as an editor. Oh no, no, the battery, yeah. the battery holder does in fact not work. Just, and yeah, you put say little, I can... just put a little piece of tape on the bottom of your battery, and that'll close that little. There's just a little gap between the battery and the bottom of the. Uh, on the negative side. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah, it's just not making contact with the bottom. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, poor Felix in our warehouse had a, had like <laughs> solder like a thousand of them to fix them once we found out there was an issue. I mean, it was it's an easy fix, but it just was annoying, annoying. to do when. Yeah. So my my worst ever manufacturing problem was back in book publishing days, and I got the barcode wrong on a print road print print run of five thousand books. And they all had to be restickered. I was like 25 as well. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> like, it was, it cost so much money. Um, yeah, it was the worst. I felt so bad about myself. But <laughs> I never got a barcode wrong again. All right. Uh, little mistakes like that. There's always the little things that end up causing all the problems, right? I know. Just got the barcode wrong. What's wrong with me? Oh, my goodness. All right. So. That should do it. That should do it. Let me just double check this with a. Ah. Great. Official. Okay. So that is now working. Yay, so, tape. <laughs> so we've got. Yeah, exactly. We've got. We've. Uh, We've got a, um, a this. We've got a, let's just check. Oh, come on. <laughs> so. Why on earth are you doing this? <laughs> naughty, <laughs> naughty thing. What is going on? He's over here just like shaking his head, just like, uh. What? Like, how can we not get a piezo to make a noise? What's going on with it? it's always us? the simplest thing that, you know. Oh, I think that, do you know what? I think that I'm using one of the old batteries. Maybe it's <laughs> not got enough <laughs> juice in it. Just chuck, yeah, it, in the, chuck it in the bin. Everything. You need to chuck it in the bin. In the bin. In the bin. <laughs> in the bin. Everything goes in the bin. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to do something very dangerous and use my scalpel. Oh, I always use a battery it. to get another battery. I can always like, poke a battery on the, on one side. What if there. you only have one battery? Well, then you're out of luck, Pete. <laughs> then basically you have to live with yourself and the shame <laughs> that is only having one CR2032 battery to your name. As I do every day. I do. I, I've only got C, uh, uh, I've got CR2016s, which are kind of skinny. However... Um, I can stick two of them in because this piezo is rated 3 to 24 volts. So I'm just going to create a quick... Well, we'll see if that works. Yeah, we'll see if it works. We're MacGyvering it. 
And you still, might have, you still might need to put a piece of tape on the bottom. Oh, there it works. Yay! Hooray! All right. So that's very <laughs> MacGyvered. It's actually got six volts in it. I've, I've made a little battery sandwich there because I've only got... So it's supposed to be this thick. This is how thick my battery is supposed to be. But unfortunately, all my batteries this thick have got are, are basically about 100 years old. So I have to use this thick. But this thick won't, oh dear, I'm not even getting it in the view of the camera. Um, but this thick won't fit um, in the battery holder. So we've put two of them in, but that's okay. Because uh, on that's the bottom here, it says three to 24 volts. Some serious so hacking going on. We're all there. golden. Wow. <laughs> wow. So All people, right, if you're so still watching we... us, we, we have finally gotten past the piezo speaker battery issue somehow. Right. Uh, it's been it's been pretty pretty Which fun. Means still watching us. This is this is the best bit. You know, the <laughs> like, next time watching we... people mess things up. Is next the time we have a someone has a bring a hack. I don't know who would do that. Double stack the batteries. No, there you go. Yeah. yeah double stack the batteries. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as you, you know, I mean, if this might blow up an LED though. Let's we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Might not though. Uh, maybe <laughs> you probably out. want a resistor in the mix. Those guys are only rated for like yeah, three no, volts anyway. You're gonna burn. That... I'd be oh. surprised you didn't burn that puppy out. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, it's getting hot. It's not burning out though, but um, it's certainly quite bright. <laughs> All right. So we have established the basic fact that it, <laughs> that if we put a piezo onto a battery it makes a noise constantly but what we're going to do is instead of directly connecting this piezo like this this isn't actually touching that's not what it's not sounding what we're going to do is we're going to send one of these legs off to our little cardboard doorbell here it's very exciting okay and um, so that it when it connects it will um it will it will um it won't, when we press the button, it will um, finish the circuit. All right, so let's um, quickly remove this on purpose. Here we are. Oh, come on. Good. Uh, I'm messing up my manicure here, but luckily um, I just did it myself, so I can always do it myself again. All right, where are we going to go? We're going to go over here. I'm just going to take a little one. So, again, peeling off some of this little tape. You know, Helen, when we designed the tape in there, we had two options, either have a backing or not have a backing on the tape. And we yeah. chose to have the backing on there because as a teacher, I used to give kids strips of tape. Like this is yeah. the tape for this project, for this group, so the kids wouldn't waste it. Um, but the downside is you have to peel it off the backing, yeah. which is not always the easiest thing to do for some people. I know some people have no problems at all with it. Other people tend to have i always have like one person in my workshop who could just never do it on their own and like i'm sorry like i can help you i'm not good at it but i tend to just leave a little piece you know i don't cut off a piece yeah. i just pull it off the roll and then just leave a little bit hanging loose so i can always start again oh that's a good idea yeah. I'll, I'll sometimes right, so bit... pre-cut yeah, a bunch just... of tape and put it on the side of the oh, table yeah. for workshops yeah. oh <laughs> that's, that's a nice idea yeah, yeah, yeah. but also you know um it keeps the children busy for longer <laughs> Right. <laughs> which is sometimes what you need yes um all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this over to this side of my cardboard doorbell in this situation because i have limited space on my desk underneath my camera they're only going to be this far apart but of course one will be on the outside of the door and one will be on the inside so i want to take it over here but to be able to do that in a nice neat um thing so the cool thing about maker tape is you can just pull it around the corner but to make it a little bit neater what i do is i Take, I take it 90 degrees the opposite way to where I want to do it, smush it down a little bit, then and then bring it back over on itself to give it a nice, um, neat turn, as she says, as Ooh. she manages to mess up the neat turn. No, 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 there we are. Nice, <laughs> neat, nice, neat 90 degree turn there. So you, yeah, you kind of there. That's, um, that's actually a tip from um, G. Kui, who did um, oh. Chibitronic. Well, and Pete always um, likes to point out whenever I do a right angle turn on one of my projects that if you're not a good right angle turner with the tape or with paper, just get, make your tape as conductive on top and bottom so you can just overlap two pieces and your connection's fine. So just does that last? Does that last though? The the, the oh, yeah. adhesive. Oh, oh really? Oh yeah, we've oh, we've yeah. had projects like on our shelf for like a year and they still work no just way. fine. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's... sometimes the adhesive on those tapes, in the copper tapes that I've used, they don't oh. really last that long. Do you know what I mean? They, they no. don't have the conductivity of those tapes. Oh, the conductivity on most copper tapes is, is spotty at best. 
And yeah. uh, even rubbish. When, it's just rubbish. Rubbish. Sorry, yes, rubbish is what people say. No, even when we used to use copper tape in some of our kits, we we paid for the like the conductive adhesive version. Yeah, yeah. And I could never actually I never actually claimed that on our packaging because it was just so inconsistent. Yeah. And I was like, uh, it technically it is, but I would never build a project where I claimed that just because and also yeah. you can always just run by the way if you want to run the tape over the top of the of the battery holder or sorry the uh, yeah. the button there you'll be able to it make contact with the top of the uh the top of those copper plates and it actually also stick down just just fine um, oh really that's good i mean i just like the look of it on the bottom it does look better that way yes yeah <laughs> um all right so then that goes there and then we're done there we are <laughs> All right, so what I've done here is I've uh, popped the, the tape that goes underneath that, which, of course, then when I turn this over, is going to connect nicely with the bottom of, of this button on the one side. And then on the other side, I'm going to connect it into the piezo. Um, I think uh, there's a TV show in the UK called Challenge Annika, and I feel a bit like Challenge Annika at the moment. Basically, she would be get, getting given these tasks, and then things would go completely wrong. And it would largely be a film of her running around um, trying to find things. And that's kind of like my making pro process at the moment. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Challenge Helen. Challenge Helen. But to be honest, like because I mean, both me and my husband are into electronics, so there's nobody to curb our hoarding. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, or I should say, fortunately, um, so we generally do have most things somewhere in the house. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of drawers, like little organizer drawers in our warehouse just full of like random uh, electronic parts yes. that date back seven, eight years from my basement. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've moved it often enough in my life to not be able to afford it much. Um, all right. So here we have <laughs> we have a, a piezo, which if, if um, a little piezo buzzer, um, if we follow the line of the 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 conductive tape so we're going from the positive side of the battery we're going do 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 electricity is going a nice little journey and then it's holding up here because there's no way for it to move around okay until i press the button but when i press the button it makes a little bridge between this bit and this bit making a nice little bridge and then it goes back over here it goes through the piezo making it do its um very annoying noise doorbell noise and then it goes back to the other side of the battery, which connect, completes the circuit and allows the electricity to um, to flow around. I'm just going to actually, um, one last thing, is I'm going to secure the piezo down with a little bit of tape now that I know that the bottom is conductive. Oh. To... Yeah, that's the easiest way to do things. We do that with a lot of yeah, our yeah. Uh, some of our motors we have, little uh, vibrating yeah. motors. Um, oh, this would be, yeah. yeah, just you know, makes it easy for people to stick things down. Or also putting like LEDs on paper crafts, just running it over the top. Um, nice. So I was really happy when like this manufacturer, which is a fabric manufacturer, um, was able to do that like reliable conductive adhesive on the bottom for us. Mm. And so yeah, uh, we're getting yeah, it's it's much nicer thanks, to be Pete. able to have that reliability. Pete with the overlays. Pew. <laughs> nice job, Pete. <laughs> Pete's just like, I can click thing. Like, I can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. Helen's book, in case you've forgotten. 20 fun <laughs> projects from Helen available at oh Amazon and other fine book retailers. Right. Yeah. I mean, although to be honest, you know, um, I, can, I think, oh, no. I barely earn any money from, you don't earn any money from books. Um, Jeff Bezos earns money from books. Oh. <laughs> Publishers. Oh. And humans don't. But still, it's a lovely thing to have out there. Um, all right, let's do this. All right. Huzzah! Uh, we, uh, we, have, we, have, <laughs> we have a working tiny little Lego and cardboard doorbell, or approximation of, of, of this as well. So that was considerably longer than I was expecting, but we did have to go on a little scavenger hunt in between the middle <laughs> um, and a little bit of um, very, very ad hoc troubleshooting where I think pretty much every single thing went wrong, um, <laughs> apart from the maker tape. <laughs> but look at that. That's great. That's actually really nice to know that you can just um, slap it over the top of that. That makes it oh, much yeah. easier. Oh, it, it really makes yeah. so many, especially, well, really, it's a paper crafts where we really 
use that for. Yeah. But also every now and then if we're kind of lazy when it comes to doing uh, programming projects, we have uh, like a project, our sound wall, because um, we replace yeah. the tape on that to do different things. We just run it over the top of the of the circuit board to hit the top contacts because um, the board's secured down on the wall with some uh, Velcro, double-sided Velcro. Uh, <laughs> and so we just do that and it works just fine on our wall. Yeah, a board just like that. But uh, yeah, if we're really lazy, we do that. But going underneath the board on Lego is much more secure long-term. But just it depends yeah. what you're doing. And yeah. sometimes it's just we want to quickly test things out. Um, so we uh, we take an easy route. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one thing I will actually say as well. So this is a nice, big, this is a nice um, beginner's make because there's, I mean, I would say that there's not much that can go wrong, but I think I've proved myself <laughs> wrong there. <laughs> there's not much that can go. <laughs> it's the most difficult doorbell I've ever made. Um, <laughs> but I'm quite happy with that. And but another thing you can do is add in um, a brain to this, so you can create your own little tunes. On um, on an Arduino, like on a, a little crazy circuits board, or an Arduino board, or a, you know, microbit, or what, micro whatever you're using. Ah. Yeah, yeah. You, oh, you're using microbit now as well. Good, they're great. I love microbit. Actually, this is an Adafruit <laughs> clue because it's the closest thing I could grab. But yes, this it looks very much like a microbit too. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Adafruit. Lo lo lovely board, lovely board. And Adafruit are lovely as well. We all love Adafruit, don't we? Um, yeah, their clue is they, I haven't I haven't managed to get my hands on one yet. They've been sold out for ages. Oh, they are um, available on their website. I think Pete looked yesterday, and they were in oh, stock okay. for forty dollars <laughs> um, US I for one. I had um, I thought I had my own notification set up, but maybe I did not see it, or maybe I did not set up the notification. Uh, limit of two per customer, uh, but. <laughs> Now, Helen, oh, the big right. question is, yeah, what I'm Morse... I'm going to put my face back on. No, I would say, oh, what yeah, Morse you, you... code do you know? <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't known what, what Morse code was since uh, Scouts 18 years ago. Uh, so, yeah. uh, I think I know one thing. I think I know SOS still. Uh, but yeah, uh, just for humor's sake. Uh, but cool beans. Do you know that Porter's Head did a cover of ABBA's SOS um, in the not too distant past? Really? Hmm. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. I mean, that was uh, nothing to do with Morse code then. It's ABBA. You can't get better than ABBA. No, no. Well, unless it's Porter's Head. I like Porter's Head. It's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, here we go. We've we've made a little tiny cardboard doorbell. Uh, it took a really long time, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> well, you know if. if... <laughs> The batteries are alive and the battery holder is working or you can just, yeah. So, I mean, like if somebody wanted to as well, like they could just get a piezo speaker, uh, a battery and then just make their own switch and just not even bother with a battery oh, holder yeah, 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 or yeah. the so, push button. I mean, so. um, this is, yeah, you can even, so actually in, in the in the book, I originally, I, I don't use a battery holder. You can just like, essentially, as long as you've got a tape, a bit of, which way around am I supposed to be going this way? Here we go. <laughs> we're, we're losing Helen. She's just like bouncing <laughs> off the side. Yeah. It's because I'm switching the wrong way. Um, yeah, yeah. you can use just um, a piezo li like this one that I used earlier, um, plus a battery, a single battery. And then you can, using cardboard and um, and tape, you can make your own switch. Because, you know, as you, as as, the, as I showed you, I mean, let me switch. Yeah, basically, if you were, uh, let me destroy this project. Here we go. So basically, if you wanted, you could have a separate piece of card like this Ooh, let me see where's where's the mirror there it is um that had tape on it and then you could just switch like that you could turn it on if it had tape underneath it so that that would count as a switch or a button as well so you can make the whole you can make the whole button thing out of cardboard you can make the battery holder out of cardboard all you need is a is a piezo and some tape and a battery so, yeah. And yeah, you're, I was like Pete actually made up uh, I think four or five different uh, templates on our on our website for just like different types of switches you can do with paper. Nice. Just because nice. we had teachers asking like, well here here like, uh, it was a four templates. Yeah, it was like a paper switch. We used um, a binder clip as like a little flip switch. Oh, yeah, uh, nice. paper clip was a. Oh, we yeah, like the two way. Switch. Oh, and we also had a momentary push button, like like an accordion style. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah. But, oh, that's cute. Oh, be, yeah, you could easily do that. That would be a really nice. That would be a really nice thing. Yeah, paper switches. I just uh, 
used use this because I had it on my desk. And that's the thing. If you, if you have the parts around, just use what you got. I always like, well, exactly. we got these parts. Like, well. which, which microcontrollers do you use? I'm like, well, to be honest, I use the ones which I have on my desk or the ones that I already have written code that will basically do what I want. Bingo. You know, so it's uh, it's uh, it's what you have on your desk is um, always always the right the right components to choose. Well, when the inspiration <laughs> strikes you, it's hard to like, you know, you can't just go to Radio Shack here in the States anymore to go buy your part. You have to like order from Amazon and wait two days yeah. and you're like I, I want to build now I got time the kids are in bed and or whatnot so it's like eh, what do you have on on hand yeah exactly exactly yeah much 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 better much better yeah cool beans wow that was fun well thank you <laughs> Hel- Helen thank you for stopping by now Helen I was gonna say besides Bar- uh well I said Barnes and Noble uh <laughs> yeah uh besides Amazon where else can people find your amazing book um, in America, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm losing my headset. Looks here. like that. Look for these doors. No, um, I, I um, yeah, sorry, no idea. No. All right, <laughs> no, no idea. What what bookshops do you even have? I mean, you destroyed all of your bookstores. <laughs> you can buy. It. I mean, mm. I mean, any. I've seen. I, there's. I did. A, I did a book event last time I was in Chicago, and they had my book. Oh. Um, I don't remember the name of the bookshop though, so. <laughs> uh, when in doubt, Amazon. Uh, that always works. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and yeah. Helen, I also I highly have, recommend people yeah, like follow you on Twitter because you post so many fun and interesting things on there. I do. I do post a lot of stuff. I do. Lo- I post a lot of free stuff as well. Um, the the robot unicorn that I was talking about earlier, the cardboard runa- u- robot unicorn. I've actually released all of the code, all of the diagrams. I've even done make it yourself videos for the robot unicorn that are just out there on YouTube. I think if you're using the microbit make code mm-hmm. um, website, if you scroll down on the main page, they've actually featured that as a. Pro- um, it's on the toys section, oh. and it's got all the the whole how to section, the whole of the how to stuff. So, but I do often make projects and then tell you how to make them um just just to just for free and just for just for fun um yeah so i also i think there's been quite a few of the projects from the book have been um published for free as um for free in um various places online as well oh one other thing um is i'm currently working on a new book um, which um, actually hasn't been announced yet. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about it or not, but oh well, never mind. Um, oh. I'm working on. A, I'm working on a. No, I'm saying I'm going to tell you anyway. And, you know, maybe I'll get told off. Um, I'm working. On, <laughs> yeah. I'm working on a new book. Um, uh, I don't know what the title's going to be yet, but it's going to be all about DIY music tech oh. projects, and that. Um, thanks to um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, will be available for free to download, oh. um, as well as um, to purchase in Softback as well. That is coming up in the next, uh, I think it's going to be coming out, I need to finish it in September, so it's coming out for Christmas. Cool. That's pretty yeah. awesome. No, I, fun musical projects are always great to do, especially when you can uh, like do something funky and weird, like your own little MIDI controller or a little like, like synthesizer. They're always the best. This is my latest musical instrument. So I make a lot of strange and obscure musical instruments, um, but this is my latest one. I don't have it plugged in, but this is this is a um, soft circuit. It's a, it's a giant tentacle that um, that you cuddle and you smush against your face. It's like a big pillow, and then when you stroke it, um, it it can because I've embroidered conductive thread all the way down the inseam. Okay. And it's got a microcontroller on the inside. So when you stroke it, um, it purrs. It's just, um, it's my. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah. So weird. <laughs> it's my response to Corona. So I just want some, you know, I just want some Wait, love. So, quick question. Like, so it looked like it was a machine. Um, you used a sewing machine to do that? It was. What, yes. what conductive um, but... thread did you use to do that? Because. So oh. I've you, oh, well, I, it's very difficult to get in America, but I have found a lady who sells it. But you have to email her. Oh. Um, but it's amazing. So normally, conductive thread. Um, I, I've used pretty much every conductive thread that exists, and I do have different favorites for different things. But this is my new favorite. You can use it in a sewing machine for for top and bottom thread, 
I have not yet had it break on me in the machine. Ooh. And it comes from a, an embroidery thread manufacturer who now have a conductive thread, which shows you that they know what they're doing with thread. They're not just making something conductive. And they're a company, the German company called Madeira, like the sherry or wine. Um, and there is a USA because um, I've, I've been, I've, I've lo- I love this thread. Um, it's silver, and I've washed it as well, and it's not tarnished. Oh. Hmm. Rates, I can't remember the the resistance off the top of my head, but it's got really good conductivity. Yeah. Um, but I can send you the details. I don't. Nobody sells it in the US. Huh. I mean, you can't even buy it from the Madeira website. Um, she's like, I, I I emailed Madeira USA and I was like, look, people on my Twitter are asking where and if they can buy this thread. And she was like, well, they can email me and I'll sell them some. I was like, wow. And she, I was like, can you not put it on the website? And she's like, no, it's not going on the website yet. Um, but I love it. I find out about it because I went to Microsoft in Seattle to do a like a mini residency there for the Makeco team, and um, and they had me um, come down to this really awesome. It's like an experimental electronic um, embroidery shop in Seattle. Um, where they have these huge, like, um, like they're like five hundred thousand dollar machines, right? They're like industrial embroidery machines. They go super fast, but they can, but they use Madeira thread, and they can machine embroider. Um, they can machine embroider um, microcontrollers onto fabric. No way. Yes, it's so cool. Yeah, I, I posted that on my Twitter as well. Like, lots of people like that one. Yeah, like, it was so cool. You can like machine void in place. You can, they can do, um, they can do so many cool things. I saw a machine embroidered piano with the Circuit Playground Express in the middle. It was wild. Nice. And like, the, they, it was just like held in place with a jig, and then the, um, it just kind of all the way around um, the Circuit Playground Express, like just stitched it into place, made the circuits. I was like. What? That, that seems a lot because like we we hand sew in stuff and like just I mean it's, it's a lot of work to hand sew in like stuff coming off of a, a board or you know lily pad Arduino circuit playground like our stuff and it's all yeah. so incompatible yeah. yay but yeah, yeah, so yeah. much hand stitching and I yeah you could all the regular conductor thread does not work with a machine and it's really Madeira tough does. To, oh yeah, gosh Madeira really does it's definitely and also for hand sewing. So it's not my favorite hand sewing embroidery because it's a slightly dull silver. So I like the if I'm hand embroidering, I'll use something more beautiful. Um, but it's actually the easiest hand sewing as well. Like so, you, like you don't have to mess around with like making sure your na- knots are tied with a dab of nail varnish or like they don't. It's not you know like some of the the, the conductor threads are like hairy. Yep. You know, like, like short circuit city. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we have conductor. Like, you yeah, actually, I saw you have some of our conductive thread. Like, it's the same stuff everybody mm-hmm. sells. I mean, there's nothing special about what we have. Yeah. And so. Um, yeah. It's the hairy stuff. Yeah. And I mean, it works yeah, well so for like. Hold it up. You can see the fibers, but you can't do like close up work nope. with the Madeira. It's quite expensive, though. The Madeira is like, well, I don't know how much this would cost for um, a big thing, but like, they've got the skeins that are like, let me just grab something so this is obviously not conductor thread this is a normal normal thread but for us um for a, a bobbin of thread a bit bigger than this it was like fifty dollars Ooh, and that's, i guess yeah. that's the difference between like like ours are like um like three dollars for five meters is kind of like the average price i think and it, yep, yeah i mean we it's just more expensive but it is excellent yeah we just do like simple 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 circuitry and even then actually we've been moving away from using conductive thread on wearables yeah. and just going with maker tape instead for like simple bracelets and stuff just to avoid sewing yeah. with younger kids but no uh, that's it's cool difficult. to know though yeah it, it, sewing is difficult it's a skill I mean, I've, I've done a lot of yeah for sure i mean i've done a lot of sewing in um in schools and it's it they find the sewing way more difficult than the coding oh yeah but, but you know you know when you when you're teaching a child it's not just about the knowledge you also need to teach them motor skills so like if if you're i mean it, actually there's um always the story that um that they they have to they get in um embroiderers to teach surgeons how to to teach them needlecraft because these surgeons have been pushed down the science route right of course um, but they don't develop any of the fine motor skills that you need in order to be a, an effective surgeon. So um, sewing is, um, I, I'd say that sewing is more difficult than soldering. Definitely. Oh, oh yeah. I, I've watched groups of kids do, do sewing and they're just, they're just afraid to do things. It's just, 
It's a yeah. complete alien project. Except there's always one kid, one kid in the classroom who's done it. Yeah. Or like them and their parents do it all the time. And, that, you know, it, it, it's easy. Like it, it's yeah. sewing a button on. But for everybody else, it, it's it's a brand new skill. It's difficult. And yeah, yeah I, try, I actually I try to dissuade people from doing sewing activities when they call us for workshops and summer camp or library programming. I'm like, avoid it. Just unless the kids know what they're doing already, just avoid sewing for middle schoolers or elementary school kids entirely. What, middle schoolers are like 11 year old, right? Yeah, yeah. like 11 yeah. to like 14 ish. Um, you know what? If you get to the age of 16 and you don't know how to sew, you've missed out on a life skill. It's like not knowing how to cook, right? You know, I mean, sometimes, yes, it is hard, but sometimes you should teach children hard things. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Otherwise, they grow up eating toast all the time, and that's that's no way to live. Yeah, and having, and having no buttons. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's true. I, it's been a while since I did my Boy Scout merit badge on sewing. And again, like... Sewing like a, a simple bracelet or something, that's one thing, but doing a microcontroller, it's so tedious. And that's really cool to hear that the like sewing machine stuff works. Uh, yeah. That works so well because that's just a, it's that's a holy grail of conductive sewing is a machine yeah. sewable uh, material. So that's pretty cool. Actually, we got in. This is kind of cool. Make Magazine sent us a bunch of conductive Velcro to play with. Um, oh, yeah. I've used that stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. And just I, I'd, I'd seen it, but never tried it before. But yeah, it's uh, I get conductive materials. Yay. Uh, I imagine that's that's Drew showing up. Yeah, Drew's showing me a sandwich. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't want any toast. Thanks. Ah, toast. <laughs> See, exactly. <laughs> does, does Drew know how to cook, or is it just all toast with him all the time? Uh, she does not know how to cook. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> well, I... like, luckily, he knows how to wash it. <laughs> uh, well, you know, got give and take. Somebody cooks, somebody cleans. Yeah, it's absolutely. division of labor. Yeah, yeah. It works exactly, so well. Exactly. Um, and I really enjoy cooking, so it's not a big deal. But <laughs> There you go. Uh, all those delicious Welsh uh, cuisines we've heard so much about here in the States. Oh, yeah. I mean, our, our national dish is literally cheese on toast. So <laughs> There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that... the, the high, high cuisines of the Welsh peoples. <laughs> Uh, being, cheese on toast. <laughs> being from Wisconsin and cheese on toast would go over well with us. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like slightly fancy cheese on toast, but it's basically still cheese on toast. We'll take it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll make uh, it if you a day. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to end things up today because uh, we still got to do some stuff around the office. But Helen, thanks. I know. We've been talking for ages. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. My dog is happy as long as he's happy. BrownDogGadgets.com. <laughs> Um, but Helen, thanks for coming on. I know it's late there in Germany. We appreciate it. And your book is really cool. And I'm, uh, we love hanging out and talking with you. You're, you're, you're... Yeah. Yeah. I always like talking to you. No, we can't see her. Right. <laughs> like a book yeah. over her face, Peach. I think he meant to do that. Oh, no, if people want to follow us on, on, here's he, our he's stuff. He's just trolling me by putting the book over my face. I, I'm, I'm surprised. Well, it's always nice to hang out with you, Josh. Always nice to hang out yeah. with you. And now he's trolling us with, uh, with sound effects. <laughs> know, he has, he has three sound effects in the software and he's using them all to his There's advantage. other ones. I just never oh, used my... the other ones. <laughs> Pete's just like, oh, I need... To... How about this one? <laughs> oh, my All goodness. Right. All right, on that note, <laughs> th thanks, credits. Helen. Right. We'll catch you later. <laughs> Bye. And we're going to roll credits. Thanks for watching. Please visit browndoggadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at browndoggadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.